Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make this video where I'm going over some tips and tricks for you guys to make your React applications become safer. So we all know that websites in itself um, are very prone to receiving attacks from hackers. Um, so making your website as secure as possible is a responsibility that a developer has to their product. And React in its core has a lot of built-in advantages um, that helps you make your websites more secure. However, there are still some things that you need to keep in mind while coding your applications. And for that reason, I decided to make this video. Before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. This is my first video since we hit 100K subs and I can even express how happy I am um, with this achievement. So I wanted to really thank all of you guys for this because it wouldn't have happened obviously without any of you guys subscribing. Um, I'm gonna launch a 100K special soon, um, but I just wanted to say thank you. And um, I really, really appreciate the support that all of you guys have given to me so far. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing I really wanna talk about is something that is actually very neglected um, in the React atmosphere, which is cross-site scripting. So for those who don't know, cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, I think it's XSS instead of CSS because CSS is already an acronym for something. It's a type of vulnerability that a website can have um, when an attacker is able to inject code into um, the website. So basically, since most websites have to run JavaScript in order to run some functionality, um, being able to inject code into your website is very dangerous. And by allowing user inputs to dictate how your website behaves, you're very, very open for XSS attacks. Now, a lot of people overlook this because it is there's a misconception that React is exempt from this kind of attacks. What happens is, um, we all know how React works, right? Um, you usually don't set an inner HTML of an element to something else. What you do is, you create states and variables that will um, re-render your application to show the, those uh, how the UI should look based on um, whatever functionality you have in your website. So you're not manually editing and changing the inner content of HTML elements. So that by itself, helps us protect against this kind of attack. Also, the React DOM library escapes all of the user inputs um, and basically translate it into strings so that um, if they try to inject code into that, it won't work. And that is really good because it will help us protect against this kind of attack. And if you ever need to actually set the inner HTML of any DOM element, um, React actually makes you use a property called dangerously set inner HTML. And the reason why the name is dangerously set is because they wanna emphasize that what you're doing is dangerous. So you'll probably never see yourself um, changing the inner HTML of an element, but you can, like it happens. So if you do so, um, they're kind of reminding you that what you're doing is dangerous, so they can take the proper measures to fix that. But then if React is safe uh, in regards to this, why am I talking about this? Well, because first of all, it is not 100% safe. Um, like I said, there's a certain situation where you might need to actually edit the inner HTML. I'm not gonna pretend like uh, every I'm covering every situation and that you will never have to use in, have to change the inner HTML of an element, but if you do so, you need to know that you need to take the measures to fix that by, for example, by either manually changing and um, checking to see if what they're adding is code or not, or by using a, a, a library that can help with that, such as one called DOM Purify, which helps you protect against this kind of situations. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but React doesn't actually uh, escapes everything. So for example, if you have a link, right, an A tag, and in that tag, you have an href that links to another website. Now, if that link is based on, for example, a state that is filled in by a user input, right? Well, React doesn't escape that. So technically, as you're seeing in the screen, I could inject code in the input, uh, and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, right, making the browser um, alert a message, and when they click on the link, instead of going to the website, it will actually run that code. So being able to recognize which parts of React actually are vulnerable to this is important. In this case specifically, what you can do to fix is find a workaround to it. For example, um, if it is a link, maybe already determine the prefix to it to be something like HTTP or HTTPS. And then adding uh, JavaScript code after that won't make any sense and it won't actually run. So this is just an example, but there's a lot of them out there and you need to keep that in mind. Now that we talked about um, XSS, I wanna talk about something that I feel like a lot of people already know, but um, it's always really good to emphasize and explain why this is important, which is 
um, handling your authentication tokens correctly. So a lot of beginners um, and a lot of people who are just trying to learn full stack web dev um, heard the word um, JSON web tokens in the past. It, it, it kind of became something famous in the programming community for some reason, although it's 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 a uh, it's it's important to some extent, but not every website needs to use JSON Web Tokens for authentication. Um, but it, it, since it became something very common, I really wanted to talk about where you should store those tokens because a lot of people decide to store their tokens in the incorrect storage system, which makes their website completely vulnerable for a variety of attacks. Um, if you have a website where um, a user has a, a web token. And that token determines if they're authenticated or not, right? So it basically determines if they can um, edit stuff of the web uh, of their account, maybe delete their account, maybe change their passwords, maybe do whatever they want with their account. That's the thing that determines if they are who they say they are, and thus allowing them to do what they can do, right? So it's a very important token. So why would a developer put that into a publicly accessible storage, such as the local storage? A lot of developers do this. They put, uh, they store uh, whatever token they get back from the backend and store it inside of the local storage for quick access um, to your browser storage. But the problem is that's not only accessible by the user and the website. It's accessible by every plugin the user has, uh, maybe the extensions the user have. So any other service can go to their local storage, take a look at what they have, see the web token, and have access to it. And that's not secure at all. So you might ask, what is the solution for this? So where should you store your authentication tokens? Well, there is an option which is storing it in your cookies. Um, well, but the issue with that is that it's also not perfectly secure. Because if you had trouble dealing and configuring your course for your website, um, then it can actually become vulnerable, your cookies can become vulnerable for this kind of attacks. So um, if you're interested in checking out how to set up course properly, or what is course, I do have a video, I'm showing you up in the screen right now, you should check it out. It's also very important for security. So I would recommend it. But um, I just wanted to give this kind of rent on tokens, because you need to be very careful. Um, this is a very specific and important part of your website that you should never make dumb mistakes. And I call it dumb because I've made it in the past as well. Um, and it is stupid. It's due to a lack of understanding on how the security measures are implemented in a website. So it can just makes your whole it just makes your whole website very vulnerable. So I wanted to emphasize this. And um, I do think it's really important. Now for the last thing I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about three small things that I see a lot of people doing, including myself in the past, um, and just go over each one of them really quickly. So the first thing is um, encrypting your data. So we have a lot of libraries out there that are going to help you with this. Um, there's no point nowadays in not actually encrypting your data, using something like BigCrypt, using something like, um, I don't know, even JWT, right, it, it basically masquerades what um, your, your tokens are, or it changes the way your a string is displayed. And that's important because um, you don't want to have plain text stored in databases if the data is sensitive. So understanding what you have to encrypt and what you have to um, hash um, is important for any kind of website. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is very good for implementation. And I do think people do a good job with this. But um, I do see a lot of beginners really confused in relation to this. So I really wanted to talk about which is actually displaying your errors correctly. Because when you make a request to a database, for example, to a server, you'll get back an error, right? And error handling everyone knows is necessary. Because if you don't handle your errors, your website will just break and your code like, it will become unusable, right? And you don't want to do that. You want to give a good user experience to your customers and your clients. So basically, what I want to recommend is that you don't give too much information on your errors. So for example, if you get back uh, an error message from your backend, right, maybe for some reason, you try to request something your database failed or um, something happened. Well, you don't want to get that error and display it in plain text for every user to see because it gives insight on how your code is written in your backend. So you don't want to do that. You want to handle your errors by, for example, creating a set of error codes and, and their respective messages. So for example, if you get a 400 uh, code error, right, 
you write a certain message. If you get a 500 code error, you write a certain message. Um, and you just have for each code, you can just specify the message and then you give a generic answer to uh, whenever you get an error. Now, people might debate this. Uh, they might say that it is good to um, be more specific. I disagree. I feel like as long as you're telling the user that something happened and it's 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 from us uh, and that it will be fixed, um, uh, as th th it should be fine. So I wouldn't worry too much about um, being generic with your users in regards to errors. I think it is actually safer to do so. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about, and it's one of the most important ones in my opinion, is properly checking what libraries and what packages you install inside of your project. So um, there's this prediction that I read a couple years ago that somewhere in the future, um, in the close future, maybe this year, maybe next year, a massive attack will happen due to um, some NPM or Yarn package being very, very dangerous, being a virus. And the reason for that is because Every developer goes on YouTube or goes on a Medium article or goes on a course on Udemy, sees a person installing a package, don't even think twice about it, just goes and does that too. Now, they don't research what they're installing. And by being a programmer, you have to understand that installing any kind of program or any kind of code into your computer has its, its downsides, right? It can be dangerous. So just because a package has 600,000 downloads in the last uh, week, which is what you usually check to see if it's credible or not, it doesn't mean it's actually safe. And um, if you're creating a product that is going to be used by a lot of people, you have to check such things, especially because you're trusting them, right? You're trusting a group of people you don't know. So who says that if you just built a, your own startup, you just build your own product, you are handling a lot of sensitive data, who says that the person, that, that team that you trusted before isn't going to try to um, add something to your code? Now, there are checks um, that prevent this from happening, but it is always good to um, keep that in mind and also understand that um, you shouldn't trust everyone and not you shouldn't trust every code you put into your into your thing. And sometimes it is even better to just do it on your own. So if you buy, if you download a package to create a certain specific UI component of your application, maybe just building that your own uh, would be good, especially because if you're using someone else's code, it can bring on bugs and um, glitches that you might not expect which then again creates more insecurity uh, for your website. So that's just a little rant that I wanted to present because um, I had to deal with this <laughs> in the past. I installed a, a dependency and I didn't really check and it literally created a massive bug inside of one of my applications and I shouldn't have done it, but we live and learn and it's fine now. So uh, I really wanted to talk about this. So this is basically it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. Subscribe, because I'm posting every week. I know I didn't post last week. I was just um, hungover from celebrating the 100K and I'm really happy again that you guys sub to my channel and I really appreciate you guys doing that. But uh, my work doesn't stop here. My goal is to get to 500,000 then get to a million then I don't know, the sky's the limit. Um, you guys are my support and I really appreciate you guys giving me this chance. I'm really excited for what will happen with the channel from now on. And yeah, that's that's basically it. I really wanted to thank everyone and I see you guys next time.